Good morning and welcome to the Hobby Second Breakfast Show. In today's episode, we are going to be building a, a list for Star Wars Legion. It's going to focus around sort of long range rebellion troopers, specifically starting with Cassian Andor and IG 11. Cool. So, um, for this list, uh, as I said, we're just going to focus around sort of some long range units, maybe some skirmishing and things like that. Um, it's going to start off with probably the two, and this, I don't think it's particularly controversial actually, the Rebels' two best long range heroes in Cassian and IG 11. Now, for Cassian, the only upgrade we're going to be taking uh, is just his free um, sniper config. I think there's definitely options you could add, um, so you could put Hunter on him. Or which would be really good if you're targeting sort of um, characters and things like that, multiple wound models. Um, and then, you know, seize the initiative is always nice for that free order and things like that. But I think here, because we're probably going to, as you'll see later, run a bit tight for points, we're just going to run Cassian by himself. Now, um, because we only have um, the one commander here um, in Cassian, we're only going to be able to, um, we have to treat him as a commander. We can't infiltrate with him, but that's fine because we're mostly going to be focusing on his sniper anyway. Um, Danger Sense 3, shouldn't play into it too much, we're hoping not to have him shot too much. Again, loadout, unfortunately not that relevant because we're not going to be taking many upgrades. But his final two are going to be much more relevant. So um, Marksman specifically, that lets him upgrade um, his uh, a dice when he spends an aim token. And a lot of the time with Cassian, you are going to be stationary with the sniper and you'll just aim shoot. So you will have that dice to improve his red and his black die from his sniper. Um, he gets high velocity and PS1 on this weapon, so um, if you're shooting at, you know, um, Jedi, things like that, obviously they're immune to pierce, but it does at least go through their dodge tokens and things like that, so effectively makes it immune to deflect as well. And finally, uh, if you do want to run a gun with him, he's also got tactical one, so you can move and shoot and still get that effect, but obviously you then couldn't use a sniper, you'd have to use his pistol. Moving over to IG-11, um, I think not quite as good perhaps as I think it's IG-88, the Imperial counterpart, but um, still a, a really solid unit. Um, he does unfortunately come with a few downsides from the command cards, but definitely an interesting unit to have. Um, Armour 1 really nice just for avoiding some chip damage. Um, Gunslinger, so um, lets you sort of shoot multiple times. Um, and with IG-11, it's sort of a bit more straightforward than perhaps with Han Solo, for instance, we have to get up a lot closer. When you're able to um, gunsling from range 4 or range 3, um, that is going to make it sort of a bit more straightforward. Uh, also gets impervious, so if you're being shot with a weapon with Pierce or in melee, um, he gets to roll additional defense dice, which is nice. Not, not fantastic, maybe, but like it definitely does go some way to mitigating a bit of damage. Um, you have to take an upgrade card, which we'll come to in a second, and Sharpshooter 1, which is nice. It's not as nice as Sharpshooter 2, and I think a lot of the times units aren't going to be getting heavy cover at the moment, so it does perhaps not come into play as much. Um, for his mandatory upgrade, I'm not intending to take Grogu, so it is going to be the bounty programming. And it is really nice because um, if you choose, um, basically you get um, bounty, um, and if you choose a commander um, as your bounty, you get PS1 on all your weapons. So that does give um, your range 3 blaster PS2, because it already has PS1. Um, and they also gain suppressive if you choose an operative. Unfortunately, it does come with AI aim and attack, which is maybe not too problematic, but isn't always what you're going to be want to be doing at the start of the turn. So perhaps not ideal to gain that AI. To pair with them, um, we're going to be putting in some more range 4 units. And you can probably guess what these are going to be. It is going to be the Rebel Pathfinders. Um, now, um, these had sort of a fairly sizable buff recently. I'll try and find it here. Um, and not that recently, actually, so I don't know why I'm saying it like that. Right, that was three years ago. Anyway, we move. Um, so they've gone down from 68 all the way down to 56 points now, which makes them sort of significantly more affordable. And they do get some really nice bits and pieces to go with them. Um, Danger Sense 3 with white surging defense die is fairly nice. Like, um, if you've got three suppression, most of the time it's going to save you a wound. Um, it's sort of how it works out on average. Um, yeah, so it, it's it's a nice, it's an okay thing to have. Um, Dauntless is nice because it combos with having that suppression, lets you still do move and a shoot, but you win, but then get additional suppression on top of that as well, which is sometimes beneficial if you're looking to fire up that danger sense. And Infiltrate's really nice, kind of letting you pick where you want to start on the battlefield. And when we're sort of going to be utilizing the range of these Pathfinders, it's really nice to kind of pick where we're going to start. Uh, again, we're just going to take the free config option on them. Um, I'm going to put two units of these in. 
for the unique upgrade. One of them is going to come with Bistan and one of them is going to come with Pow. Um, now, for both of these, I think they both have kind of upsides and downsides. So um, Pow is maybe he does less damage, but is always available. And a red and a white is quite nice, especially when you search to hit. And Inspire 1, if you're pairing them with these, again, handling suppression and stuff like that, it's okay. And he does come with two wounds, which is also quite nice. Um, Bistan is sort of much more swingy and kind of probably has a bit more utility to him with that impact and that ion. So if you are trying to deal with vehicles, that is a really nice thing to have. He does exhaust, so it might get a bit complicated with having to sort of recover, shoot, recover, shoot, and things like that with Bistan. But I think there will be ways to manage it. Um, in terms of upgrades, um, I think with this many white die, and while it's maybe not the highest quality upgrade in the world, I will put targeting scopes on both of these because I think a lot of the times we will be aiming and shooting. And definitely on this unit, I'm going to give them duck and cover. Um, just because, firstly, having duck and cover would improve your cover if you're being shot at, and gaining suppression lets you roll additional defense die. So it seems like a really nice pickup on these guys. Um, moving on to our core units, because unfortunately we do need some core units. Um, one difficulty we're going to have here, I think, is sort of managing our orders and things like that. And I think sort of a fairly solid addition. Again, I've spoken before about what I think of the various core units. Um, not a fan of any of the Rebels ones, really. To be honest, the best ones are probably the Pike Syndicate, but they don't count towards your limit. Um, I'm going to take a unit of Rebel veterans. I'm going to give them the comms tech. And I'm going to give them HQ uplink. Um, that, again, just gives us a bit more order control. I'm also... And probably spotted this before, I'm going to give them recon intel and then I'm going to pair them with a unit of the medium blaster troopers and I'll give them the link to targeting array. What this will hopefully let us do um, is it just allows us to have a bit more control um, over our orders because on turns where um, uh, Cassian or IG have to play a command card that um, doesn't give more orders out, you can tap the HQ up link and it would give the veterans an order and hopefully they're close enough to coordinate onto the medium blaster troopers. So that takes a couple of units out of your stack. And with the medium blaster troopers, ha would have an aim token and they have fire support. So again, what you could do is this unit is just nice and flexible and could fit in sort of supporting um, some of your models that maybe are a bit closer or in a better position. Um, to meet our core limit, I'm probably just going to put in an extra unit of the veterans and an extra unit of the medium blaster trooper. Again, with this sort of setup with the range four, we're going to try and sort of pick off as much of the opponent as we can before they get to us. Again, we don't have a huge amount of firepower, but I'm hoping the sort of ability to control the range of the rebel pathfinders, things like that, might just give us sort of able to pick our battles a little bit. Um, the next unit I'm going to put in, um, and it's pretty much picking up exactly uh, where we got to last time, is going to be the speeder truck. And I'm going to kit it out very similarly to how it went before. Um, I think Grim is really nice in this one um, because um, it gains a dodge token. So it ruined well, 1 to 2, gains a dodge token and a suppression token. Now, normally that suppression token is a bit of a down... Uh, may gain a suppression token. Um, normally, you'd never choose to really gain that suppression token, but um, with the three units here with Danger Sense, Cassian and the Pathfinders, it may occasionally actually be quite beneficial to hand out that suppression, and it can also, again, be used to improve your cover. Um, in terms of the sort of critical upgrades, um, I don't think Backworld Medic particularly works here. And um, again, I'm not sure the Astromech is quite what we're looking to do. We're sort of looking to use this more of a supportive unit. So I will be picking the Gaunt Droid and the Tactician. Tactician's really useful here for getting those extra aims because it lets you fire up again, sort of. We have sort of some quite large, fairly low quality dice pulls. So getting sort of aim tokens handed out with the Tactician to maybe the Pathfinders. Um, or to buff up Cassian's Marksman, because um, especially if you're shooting, um, maybe, I don't think you'd really shoot at units with armor, maybe units with armor, so um, I don't know, uh, the Dark Troopers or something like that. If you're looking for those crits, if you had sort of two or three aim tokens, actually a lot of the time, with sort of a red and a black, you would hope to guarantee a couple of crits going through, and that does at least give you some guaranteed wounds. Um, so, uh, and then in terms of equipment upgrades, um, if I was sticking to theme, I would actually go for the heavy laser retrofit here. But I think this dice pull with the quad laser for an extra nine points is just super nice. Um, and that impact too. Again, we don't have a huge amount to deal with armor here, aside from maybe Bistan. So just getting this in with a bit more impact is really nice. 
And finally, even though I um, just talked smack about them earlier, I'm going to put in a unit of the Rebel Troopers. And to go along with this theme of Range 4, I'm going to be dropping in the DLT-20A. Uh, and that brings us to exactly 800 points. Um, I think there's there's this definitely isn't fully optimized. And like I think, um, especially with Bistan, you could consider putting in other things that exhaust. So for instance, a pensive push. But then I think it gets weird with if you move and tap push and Bistan, you would then have to recover next turn. But then you couldn't move using offensive push again um, unless you wanted to sort of move and then shoot the following turn. Um, Rebel Veterans, I think they're reasonably threat. They'll be reasonably solid here. And again, they're mainly just there to give us a bit of order control, things like that, absorb a bit of damage. Um, people really seem to fixate on the medium blaster troop. I'm not really sure why, but in pretty much every game I've played with it, it has been the first unit to die. I think people just have a real fear of fire support, having played, you know, Republic for the last 15 games in a row. Um, so yeah, I think I can see where why people go for it, but it is it is a nice unit to have, um, and it is surprisingly tough with that four health. Um, and if you can tuck it into a nice position, it normally sort of is provides some good intimidation, especially if you're able to um put other units kind of to distract around it and then it can sort of shoot without having too much threat uh, in terms of command cards i think it's pretty straightforward here um really like crack shot for cassian um that gunslinger kind of turns in him into a better hand solo um and him also gaining that standby at the end of his turn could be really nice because he maintains gunslinger so um, if a unit comes within two of him it would enable him to then shoot up to two times again if there are two units in range. Now, I think that's a bit of a fantasy, maybe, but it is definitely a nice thing to have in your back pocket. Um, the choice is now for me then between Sabotage Communications and Mechanical Carnage. I think the upside of Mechanical Carnage is huge, but it would be quite difficult to get right. Um, and also, I'm, I don't know if we're hoping to get IG up, up that close, but maybe it's just something that when the opponent's kind of pushed up to us a bit, we can send IG in there and he can sort of go out there, especially as it's a one pip, he could maybe get off a load of damage before they're able to move in. Uh, in terms of two pips, again, I think Cassian's two pip is, is solid. Um, I'm not sure how many units um, we will actually have that are wounded, especially um, when we have two units that kind of we're coping to keep at long range um, in sort of if he's ordering um, a commander or the um, operative unit. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure how good this is, but it does at least um, give out two orders, even if we don't end up making full use of it. Um, and then we're just going to take ordinary push. I don't. I think this is this definitely is definitely solid, but I think just having a bit more order control from push would be really nice here. Uh, and then three pips. I think Cassian's three pip is great. The free recover is fantastic, especially on you know this unit of Pathfinders or the veterans as well, because getting. Um, uh, or it wouldn't recover the veterans, sorry, so it'd have to be on the Pathfinders, but getting a free recover on these guys would be really nice. If refreshing Bistan or something like that would be really good. Um, and then we don't have a choice. We have to take anti-capture capture protocols. Um, this weapon's pretty crazy, um, and I think if you if you get good use out of it, it could kind of wipe out a huge portion of your opponent's army. The downside is I think it is quite difficult to get right. Um, and yeah, it would be interesting to see um, whether or not we're able to get value from this, but we don't have a choice. It has to get put in. So yeah, that one's getting dropped in. So yeah, we've got some 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 good firepower, some good range firepower. I think Cassian's probably probably the best sniper in the game, maybe alongside Echo. Um, but yeah, that, that consistent damage with that marksman going along would be really nice. And then IG-11 sort of... Obviously, the downside is, compared to his Imperial counterpart, is that he can't combine them using Arsenal. He has to shoot separately. So if your opponent's units are in cover, it's all very well that you're shooting twice. But if two of those get absorbed by cover, maybe even if you're lucky, you're only putting one wound through, which isn't that exciting. Um, but yeah, I think he, he's a solid unit to have. And at least that sharpshooter one gets rid of some of the cover. Uh, the Pathfinders are really, really nice. Like, I think the config... Oh, click on this, you see what I'm talking about. I think the config's really interesting. Like, having that range four with Surge to hit is quite nice. It means the Pathfinders were putting out five white and a red at range four, which is quite nice. I think, actually, that's some, some really good long-range firepower. I'm not sure how often you're going to switch the short-range config, because I think, um, obviously, the red dice with Surge to hit has sort of seven hits out of the eight. 
um and then the white surging two white surging die which would be what they have on their basic card if you've got two of those you've got sort of six sides that you could hit so i think it's quite marginal but maybe that red is just more consistent at range two and even and we will be recovering with these units quite a lot so we will have the option to flip whenever we would like to as i say the veteran is just there to be really solid um the medium basket trooper does seem to be quite a scary thing um and the speeder truck is just there to be really solid like the quad lays are actually like six black with impact two is pretty nice and it is really solid like i think the shields from the gonk droid and when they get to refresh every turn as well if you've lost any it could be really nice and the rebel troopers again that critical one on the DLT is really nice. And actually, you know, this unit, if it's shooting at range three, it's putting out six black and a white with critical one. Like, it's a pretty nice dice ball to have. Um, and yeah, it, they can just be an objective cap or something like that. Like, just a, a nice little activation to have around the battlefield. Cool. Well, let me know what you think. Sorry it wasn't all ranged four, but I did put in as much as I thought was reasonable. Um, you, uh, Another thing I missed out on is actually the CM093, which of course go and give range four, but you know, we move. Um, the next video on the channel will be a sort of another custom card video um, and yeah, looking to maybe do some sort of army showcases and things like that. I'll try and get Onod and Mare to wheel out their armies and then we can go through them, have a talk about the painting and how they've enjoyed playing with them. So yeah, um, like and subscribe and hopefully see you soon.